In this module, we're going to talk about levels in typical digital audio workflows. And we're going to structure our discussion around uh, an idea about a typical workflow for a digital audio project that might be divided into three distinct phases. We might begin by recording or capturing some sounds. And then we might go through a long phase where we mix and transform these sounds, for example, using digital audio workstation software. And then when we're, we have finished with all of that, there's a stage where we're going to optimize um, our result and put it in a form that is fit for delivery to other people and other listeners. And what we're going to see in this module is that um, the management of levels works a little bit differently in each of these three stages. So we've already talked in other settings about the management of levels in recording, so this should be review a little bit. Um, we know that we want to avoid clipping, um, because when our levels go above the maximum that we can represent, we basically lose that information and we get something that sounds very distorted as a result. We also want to keep levels well above the electrical and digital noise floors in our system. So we want the levels to not be above the maximum, but we also want them to not be sort of always close, close to the bottom either. And this leads to the idea of headroom. We do um, tests where we change our preamplifier gain so that our signals are coming in reasonably high, but not too high, where we're leaving enough headroom to compensate both for how unpredictable the thing we're recording is and also how expensive or catastrophic it would be if we had to do it again. So in the recording stage, to sum up what we saw is that our ideal level, our, the ideal peaks of the things that we're recording would be somewhere below the maximum, below zero decibels full scale, but not too far below that maximum. So now we move into a stage, let's say, where we're mixing and transforming these things. And I want to um, show what happens here, typically, by moving to Reaper. So here I have a, a, an imaginary Reaper project. And I've got um, some tracks. I have five tracks. And let's say that their faders are in various different places, because I've been mixing and I've been listening to the relationship um, between those things. And then I'm listening. And if you look at what's happened, while I was listening there, the sum of all these tracks, all of those individual measurements getting added together, came to more than the maximum. Over here in the master area of the mixer, Reaper has left an, an ominous red um, notation here to, to warn me that the sum of all those tracks at some moment came to more than the maximum. And it clipped, in other words. The sum of all these tracks clipped. There's nothing wrong with the individual recordings. We can see just looking at them that individually they're not clipped. But the sum of all of them together in our project mixed, unclipped. And so what we want to do in this situation is two things. We want to pull down this master fader a little bit. And when we do that, we're not going to change the relationship um, between our individual tracks in terms of level. The, they're going to have the same relationship to each other that they had before in terms of level. But the shape that results from all of them being added together, we're going to make that shape a little bit smaller. And because I saw over here that I had clipped by about 3.4 decibels, I pulled the fader down a little bit more than 4 decibels. And if I reset this here and I listen again, hopefully this time it won't clip. So sure enough, we were able to listen to that moment this time without clipping. Um, and th that way I have some confidence that what I was hearing while I was working on my project is really the result of mixing all these tracks together 
and not the sound of clipping and distortion from going over the limit. And that's what I want to do. So, so to kind of um, repeat what we just saw there in that demonstration, when multiple tracks get added together, the levels tend to rise. And like in recording, we still want to avoid clipping. Um, but unlike in recording, we can totally adjust and listen again when clipping does happen. So what we need to do when clipping happens during mixing or transformation is we need to reduce the overall levels, in the case of our work with Reaper, by reducing the master fader. And we need to listen again, because when we were listening before and it clipped, we were listening to the clipping rather than to the real mix of our tracks. And I want to emphasize that this is the only correct response in this situation. What we don't want to do is we don't want to reduce those individual track faders because those are for changing the balance between different tracks. And so to sum up, at the mixing transformation stage, there isn't really an ideal digital level. Um, but it is useful to be consistent or calibrated about our playback volume. Um, so you know, if we have speakers, um, it's very useful to kind of consistently have the, the, the volume or the gain on those speakers at a, in a certain place. If we're listening on headphones, it's useful to have the that sort of playback volume that's controlling what is sent to those headphones. It's useful to have that at a cons consistent place so we kind of know um, what to expect. But that's sort of a different question from an, our management of ideal digital levels. There isn't really an ideal digital level at this stage. We just need to do the right thing when clipping happens. And so then, let's say we do a bunch of mixing and transformation, and we're happy with our project and, and it sounds good. Um, our work is not done. There's usually a third phase of delivery or finalization where now that we know really everything there is to know about our project, and now that we have um, total control over it, we just want to make sure that it gets to the end listener in as optimal a way as possible. So this is what we're thinking about in the delivery or finalization stage of a project. So we have total control at this stage, and that means that we can make those final peak levels the, whatever the highest point in those sh shapes that result from mixing all our signals together, we can make those levels whatever we need to make them. So what do we need to make them? Well, if we have a level, a peak level, that's very, very close to the maximum, but not at the maximum, it'll be furthest away from that digital noise that we talked about in the sampling theory module. And it'll also be furthest away from any electrical noise in the playback system, where our file or where our result eventually gets listened to. And at the same time, by making this peak level not exactly at the top, we'll still be able to instantly tell this apart from a clipped recording. A, for a, with a clipped recording, its highest level would be right at the top where it got cut off. So that leads us to a useful standard for final delivery levels. It's not the only standard out there, but it's a very, very useful one, and it's why we use it in this course. If we take our final digital audio results and we make sure that the peak sample is at minus 0.3 decibels full scale, what we'll be doing is keeping our levels far away from the noise in our system, and at the same time, we'll be producing something that is not clipped. We sometimes talk about this um, in other language. We might say that what we're doing is um, normalizing delivery levels to minus 0.3 decibels full scale. Normalizing is that that operation of, of taking a signal shape and changing its size so that its peak or its highest level is at some particular place and all the other levels are wherever they need to be to have the same shape. And so this leads to a final point in this model which is about this operation of normalization more generally. So we've already um, seen that normalization to minus 0.3 decibels full scale is a very useful thing to do in the final delivery of a digital audio project. But we could do this at other stages too, but just because we could doesn't mean that we should. In fact, normalizing individual source recordings in a project it would, is usually useless and sometimes harmful. The reason it's useless is because the individual sources in our project Ultimately, the levels that come from those sources are going to be set by our mixing decisions. We, we're going to make this one smaller and this one a little bit bigger. We do this, um, I think, driven by what we hear uh, and by the, the creative possibilities that we hear in the material. It's not fundamentally 
uh, a technical decision or something driven by numbers. And normalizing individual source recordings to a particular level can also sometimes be harmful um, if it's accomplished by making new audio files. Every time we make a new audio file, there's some, some amount of additional digital noise that is introduced. And in the same connection, normalizing anything at any point in the process to zero decibels full scale, in other words, right to the top, that makes no sense at all. Um, but if you look at the files that you find out there in the world, you will have no trouble finding many, many files um, that have been normalized in this way. Um, as the note on the slide says, unfortunately, this is very widely practiced, um, but we're going to set a higher standard in this course. Normally, we're going to normalize um, our material our final delivered projects to minus 0.3 decibels full scale, and basically we're not going to normalize anything else. So in summary, um, we looked at the different stages of a typical digital audio project and saw that when recording, we use headroom to keep levels below and not too far away from the maximum. When we get to the mixing stage, we reduce the master fader and listen again whenever clipping happens. And when we're finalizing or delivering a project, we normalize the um, overall peak level to a standard level, such as minus 0.3 decibels full scale. And finally, we saw that normalizing in other situations is either not useful, um, sometimes harmful, and that normalizing to the very maximum has no utility at all.